Hi, I'm Clark Dennis Cundiff, and I am the pastor at Bay Lake United Methodist Church at 4300 Shore Drive in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and coming to you today on Sunday, July 18th for our message today. It's how do we walk with the Holy Spirit to help us discern truth? How do we walk with the Holy Spirit to help us discern truth? Uh, may God bless our time together, and may the divinely inspired words of God fill your heart, minds, and soul and deliver to you that message that God wants you to receive during these few minutes. Walking with the Holy Spirit, been talking about the Holy Spirit, ruah, the Hebrew word for God's breath, God's wind. Greek word is pneuma, that, that spirit that God breathed in life into Adam from the very beginning. And, and the disciples were blessed with the, the Holy Spirit uh, at the time of Pentecost this breathing in of the Holy Spirit of life. And so I, I was trying to think, I want to walk with the Holy Spirit. And it seems like truth has lost some of its <laughs> credibility. Interesting word, right? Why is all of a sudden truth not prominent? It seems like so many people are claiming things that by any fact-checked or any checking or looking for any evidence uh, that what they're saying is is not truthful. And I, always, I do love people send texts on the internet and occasionally I look and I do a fact-check and I go, I, I had a sense that I was like, I don't think that's correct. Uh, and maybe that was my gut. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit helping me to discern what is truth. Because reading God's divinely inspired word is that way we learn the truth. We learn the ways that God wants us to be and to do. Do not bear false witness to your neighbor. One of the Ten Commandments. That's like, don't lie, right? Tell the truth. One of my ten, ten, uh, one of my tenets of my personal mission statement is to tell the truth. That way you don't have to remember what you said. You're always telling the truth, right? doesn't mean I volunteer information that may not be needed or wanted or welcomed, but it does mean I tell the truth or I don't say anything at all sometimes. Um, so how do I discern the truth? Well, the, the power of the Holy Spirit is amazing. And it's this incredible part of God. Remember, God the Father, Jesus, Son, the Holy Spirit. Trinity, three parts, same substance. All God, all been present since beginning of time to all time. And Jesus told his disciples in John 14, I'm leaving soon, but I will send you the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom will in, help you in my name. Let's see, John 14, verse 25. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. Then John 16, verse 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak, excuse me, on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. John 8, 31, then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. Of course, back in, in Pentecost, when Jesus says, await in Jerusalem for the Spirit to come. Acts 2, 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So we have this superpower. <laughs> now you always like, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have a superpower? Maybe like Superman being able to fly. Now he had other superpowers too, you know. Had laser vision, you know, he could zzz, whatever. Um, had tremendous strength. It's like, well, you know, what if he had a superpower, which one would it be? Flying would be kind of cool, but maybe I thought, wouldn't healing be a great superpower that I could help heal people? One of the Star Trek episodes, the original Star Trek, where Kirk was injured and was with someone who was an empath, and this empath could heal Jim Kirk from his injuries. And there was an experiment, the alien people who were put them together wanted to see if the empath would 
heal to the point of, because as she healed, she took on the wounds, just as Jesus took on those wounds for us, took on the suffering of the cross for we've forgiven of our sins. This empath in this episode would heal the person, but she would get that for a while until her body healed her. And the experiment was to see if she would heal him totally to the point of risking her own life. And she did. And if I, I have time to remember, I think I'm being, I mean, she did live, but she was willing to give her whole life to save Jim Kirk, to heal him, just as Jesus was willing to give his life for each one of us. So we may be healed, so we may be forgiven of our sins and have died and raised from the dead. We have the gift of, of the eternal life, the power of the resurrection, which is that power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus needed to, to go and do that for us so we can have a relationship with the perfect God, but it also needed it so the power of the Holy Spirit could be with everyone all the time. So I want to walk with the Holy Spirit, right? I want the Holy Spirit to help me discern what is truth, what is good, what is right, and to make sure I seek to not do what is wrong. So it may be helpful to spend a moment though thinking about how do we receive information? And I was in this class and, and they were you know, thinking, well, you know, we have all this information that comes to us and all the time. And we're always trying to say, is it true? Is it not true? And granted, sometimes I'm, I'm, I want to rush to judgment. I should open my mind to listen with possibility thinking and reserve judgment until after I truly listen, you know, seek first to understand before I understand. So I can see it from their point of view, then decide, you know, what if I think it's right or wrong, but listen with the intent to uh, first seek to understand. So I thought, well, you know, how are some ways we do receive information? And, and the, the, the thought they had is that we all have attitudes and of course, if you don't think so, just ask somebody, they'll give you their attitude. And we also have opinions too, right? You could, you could talk about opinions all the time, right? Everybody has opinions. Now, whether they share them or not, they might not. And we do have our beliefs. Ideally, hopefully they believe in, based on the principles in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. So we have these beliefs as well. And think about this kind of as a, a framework. And that, that these, and you may not be able to see that very well, but attitudes, you know, opinions, beliefs. So now you have this screen, if you will. And basically those three make up for Clark Dennis Cundiff and for all of us, our truth. So, so, that's, so that's my truth, right? Now, Basically, this now becomes a screen through which I receive information from the world, kind of like a pair of glasses. All the information I receive comes through the screen of my attitudes, my opinions, my beliefs, my truth. So when the information comes in, it comes in from a certain area, and it comes in, but it comes through this screen. See, and it becomes refracted because it comes through the screen of, of my attitudes, my opinions, my belief, my life experiences. So I don't see the world as it truly is. I see the world as I am. And my experiences, my attitudes, my opinions, belief, my truth alter the way I receive that information. So the goal is always to be open to more and more information, to clarify, to help make what I receive match the reality. That I'm truly seeing the world as it is, that I'm kind of counter my natural biases, natural um, prejudices, that I'm trying to be aware of unconscious bias, that I can see the world truly as it is, not as I am. And that's a challenge, right? But I believe, what if we, what if we added the Holy Spirit to this? What if we added my truth to reading the Bible every day? We'll say the Bible, right? So now, I'm reading the Bible every day. I'm helping to refine my truth to be God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit's truth. I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is, and the Bible is giving me my beliefs. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, soul, and your strength. Love the neighbors yourself, the two greatest commandments. And I'm looking for possibilities. I have an attitude of all things are possible through God so that I can 
receive information in a more clear way that it, the Holy Spirit will help me to counter some of those biases that I naturally have. It's a natural a progress. And, and granted, some of them are, are safety. If, you know, if I've had an experience with somebody hurt me, then I'm going to be cautious with that same person or same person like that person. But then I have to be careful to not apply one experience to all. So I want to walk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this amazing gift, this amazing power that again and again and again with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus healed, the disciples healed. All these things you can do and more, Jesus says, we can heal. So we have this superpower of healing. It comes in the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in us as we choose to believe. We have this Holy Spirit within us. And amazing things happened in the early church. That's how they grew. And that's how Peter had 3,000 people come to believe as he was filled with words from the Holy Spirit. Luke 12, 12. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. Do not worry about how to defend yourselves of what you are to say because the Holy Spirit will help you do that. And 1 Corinthians 12, 7. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We are given the Holy Spirit that resides in us for the common good, that we can use it as our superpower to do amazing, incredible things in this adventure called life. To truly be open and to discern, using the power of the Holy Spirit to discern what is truth. Is it scriptural? Does brothers and sisters in Christ affirm it? Does God make it come to pass? Is it fruitful? Is it lifting people up, not tearing people down? So if we were to use that litmus test, using the Holy Spirit, so that to make sure my beliefs are in keeping with God's beliefs in the Bible, to make sure my truth is truth from the Bible, that, that I have this attitude of unconditional love as God loves us unconditional, and I have this opinion that Everybody is of immense worth and value because we're all beloved children of God. You see, if I have that, if I have that, think about the amazing things we can do. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit inside you, inside me, inside all of us. And then we come together as the body of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's the, it was plural. It was intended for the, the body of Christ to come together and we'll all be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and go and do and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Believe. Believe in the Holy Spirit. Take that superpower. The manifestation of the Spirit that we each given spiritual gifts for the common good. Hold on. Use your... Acknowledge you have that Spirit, that Holy Spirit. Imagine you acknowledge you have that special superpower. And use that Holy Spirit that resides in you to do amazing, wonderful things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Take care. God bless. Hope you'll join us on uh, Sundays at 9 for our online service for praise, our more praise songs. And then at 11 uh, for our more traditional service. And that's both of them are in person. But 9 is our online service. Take care. God bless.